Um, marketing and branding. Um, so marketing uh, and branding for a band is no different to a business. You've got to think about the great businesses out there that are internationally renowned of your McDonald's and your Coca-Cola's and whatever other company you can think of. They have a logo, they have a meaning, people know why they go there and what product they're going to get, you know, and it's consistent, right? So um, thinking about Raksha um, and your branding and marketing, do you have a brand or do you have an idea of a brand? Do you, do you know where you want to go? I mean, what, what you're kind of getting at is that it's in your mind, but you haven't yeah. quite yeah. figured it out yet. So yeah. that's, that's normal, but I guess, you know, in this whole amateur to pro journey that we're trying to take you on at Behind the Wall, this is part of it, right? And once again, it's not probably your most favourite thing, you know, you all love playing music and being on stage, but an understanding of like image and consistency and, you know, who your target market is and why they will listen to you and, and how to get to them and how to grow your audience is a very important in actually selling records and selling live tickets to live shows and, and going into new markets because people will identify with you as a certain image, a certain look and therefore, you know, go, hey, like Raksha are that band, you know, I remember them because of this. So before we work on your marketing and branding, I just want to kind of throw some examples out there and this will be a bit of an interactive thing of like, who are your favorite bands and what do you remember about them? Yeah, so, I mean, you, like I'm pretty good at figuring out what you're trying to say. You're saying they had some dance moves. Yeah. They all look the same. Yeah. And they've got a genre you can't quite pick, but you're, you're identifying that they're targeting. Is their music all the same? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, but, but like, same genre. Yeah. Same genre, different speeds or whatever, you know. It's, yeah. it's kind of, you know, you could say it's disco something, something, right? Or, you know, there would be a word to describe it, right? Yeah. So that... Pardon? A theme. Yeah, they've got a theme. So let's look at some other bands, some bigger bands. Well, let's look at a genre, for example. So punk, you know, especially 70s punk. Mm -hmm. What what comes to your mind? Not giving a fuck. Not giving a fuck. Swearing yeah. books. Yep. Crazy hair stuff. Swearing. I broke it. I what about the Sex Pistols, for example? What did they wear? Yeah. yeah. You know, if they're, they're representing that era, right? Yeah. So what did they wear? You know, and this is, a, this is branding, you know. Like, this is, you know, what does the average person think punk is? Yeah. You know, not punk rock, which is more, more modern, but, you know, that 70s punk. You know, what, what clothes did they wear? Leather. Leather, ripped. Or denim, sometimes. What did they have all over their face? Piercings. Piercings. What was their hair doing? Cuffing. Spikes, yeah. colours. Yep, and what what was the message there? Uh-huh. Yep, and why and why do you think they were doing that? Uh, yeah, yes. but like you know, if you look historically, England or London at the time, it's and going to the Sex Pistols specifically, there was like social turmoil going on, mm -hmm. high unemployment. I think there was a garbage strike for like three weeks. You know, rubbish piling up in the streets, and it was like these bands were like, "Screw you, screw the Queen, screw." The establishment, and you know, then births a genre which well, is punk, it's and it's done for us, yeah. you know, it's kind of you know, let's stick it to the world, you know. And I guess they didn't probably do a course like this and figure out what branding is, but <laughs> it evolves that way, right? You know, and now we know that if you want to be a '70s punk rock band, you're going to be something like the Sex Pistols. Sex Pistols. Straight away, like when I said a word which is '70s punk, you had the ability to describe it, right? Yeah. So let's look at say. You know, we were talking yesterday about your genre, um, and let's let's call it indie pop rock. What do you associate with indie pop rock? Uh, Hipsterism. Hipsterism. Yeah. Kind of like op shoppy. Op shoppy. Yep. Yeah. Like, 
<laughs> glasses, nerdy. Liberalism. Liberalism, art students. Yeah. yeah. You know, so straight away, if, if you're going to identify with that audience, you need to dress that way, right? Mm. You know, it might be, it might be op shop suits, it might be, you know, it's not saying you always have to be one specific thing, but the more consistent you are, and it might be an album by album thing, or it might be a, you know, period by period, or, you know, touring schedule by touring schedule thing, but you'll, you'll define yourselves by what you wear. And they probably had a meeting very similar to this, and they said, branding, marketing, well, what are we doing? Like, you know, how do we go to the next level? Let's, let's be something, you know, let's, let's define ourselves or define, yeah, totally. So it matters, right? You know, like do you, when you watch television shows, do you, they're always dressed up, they're always got makeup on, there's always somebody making sure they look the best they can. Now, rock and roll, yeah, you can get away with looking a bit shabby, but always look shabby if you're going to look shabby. You know, don't come with a, you know, a, a groomed haircut one day and then, you know, a set of dreads the next day and, you know, because people aren't going to identify with you unless you're trying to be incognito and that's your thing, but you've got to keep that going, right? If McDonald's changed their logo every week, do you reckon they'd do as well as they did? No. 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 So, you know, they, they know what's going on. Yeah, so consistency, 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 consistency. I want you to start thinking about what you wear on stage. Just One person could have a bit of like, your tinsel, yeah, you know, you know, just little things, you know, so it's like, you know, she's got glitter, then, you know, if there's a camera shot, it's you've got a bit of tinsel, you know, so you've all got like one little thing, you know, it's like a, what do they say, you know, if you're going out dating, you have a prop, you know, yeah. and it gets people talking, right, so it's like, oh, the guitarist has a, in his hair, or, you know, the, the keyboard player wears a glittery bow tie, yeah. you know what I mean, so it's yeah. following... Whether it's a badge that's glittery and one guy's got a bow tie and one's got like glittery shoes and one's got, you know, just puts a bit of glittery spray paint in his hair. At least you've got that kind of theme going on. And think about colours as well, you know, like whites are good, blacks are good, you know. Never wear stripes or like checkers are probably okay, but, you know, the, there's certain rules and you can do your own investigations into that, but, you know, things are going to look better on camera and on under lighting and you know so white's good because lighting's going to work on it you know yeah. checker pants are fine I don't, I, I don't. but you know once again you know go go and watch all your favorite bands on youtube to, you know i ain't even wearing checkered pants you know like start making notes and as we're compiling our you know analyzing ourselves and our music and you know describing and thinking about what rapture are is like what do we wear you know we've we've identified the glittery thing that amber does so let's kind of maybe find a prop each that is glittery. You know, maybe it's a little bit of glitter tape around your mic stand or something like that just to kind of, you know, keep that across. Clothing, I think, yeah, have a set of clothes or a couple of sets of clothes that you always wear on stage. Because when you're on stage, no one's going to be like, oh, like, dirty guy doesn't wash his clothes. They're going to know that's your costume, you know. And Jesse would kind of agree with me uh, about this, that, a lot of bands come to soundcheck, they wear whatever they want, that's where you get to be freedom of speech and wear my dirty whatever clothes that I love, but they bring in their change of clothes and just before they get on stage they change into them, go on stage and then you change out of them. Or you know, or maybe you stay in it after there because well, that's when you're dealing with fans and you're like, you know, we're a band, you know. So it has to, it has to mean something to you and mean something to your audience that is the same and the same and the same for a long period of time and then, you know, okay, we're going to change that again. You know, we've, we've thrashed that EP now, let's do a new look, you know, let's, you know. And it's going to be to do with your photo shoot as well. So, like, you're going to have a press photo which matches your stage look. You know? So you don't want your, your press photo to be in your garage bandy clothes and your stage photo to be, like, all glittery and jazzy, you know, because it's, it's not going to be consistent. And then... Um, it's up to you personally, but there is no harm in every single one of you having that press photo as your profile pic on all of your uh, Facebooks or as your banner. Because when you start to get media um, attention, people will look at your Facebook pages, and if they see some consistency, they're like, oh, wow, like they've, they've at least discussed this, they've at least thought of this. So. 
it's um, not essential, but I got this um, advice recently that I should have the same profile pic for my Insta, for my LinkedIn, for my business Facebook page. Um, so think about that. Like, I mean, Raksha might have a logo at some point, but you know, um, at least if it's a photo, it's got a look on stage. Tick, you know, start thinking about that. Um, who you are. Have it consistent with your press photos. Um, get a logo, get a font, stick with that in periods. So they're all kind of no-brainers. Um, then another thing that you've got to start being consistent with is the way you deal with people and the media. So pick out who's going to be speaking to people about things and you know, get, get better at that idea of like, what's the message you're trying to say? We're Raksha, we do this. We're Raksha, we do this. We're Raksha, we do that. So the more consistent that message is of like, you know, we want to go play Falls Festival, you know, talk about these things. If, if the message is consistent, it'll sync with people. They're like, you know, these guys have this goal, therefore we're going to help them get it because they want it, you know, and start, you know. Be consistent with your message, where, where you're going to, like, we love our fans because, you know, like, you know, and, and repeat, 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 you know. Sometimes it feels like boring to yourself, but every other person hasn't heard it as many times as you have. So if you're not okay with being somebody that talks and talks and talks and talks yourself up, then maybe that's not your role or that's your management thing. But if that is, then, you know, control the social media and, and keep pumping the same message out. You know, like in posts, you know, like, so excited, we love our fans, they're always crazy and dancing, you know, and it's, what that saying is like, to a person that hasn't been to your show, is like, oh, crazy and dancing, I love coming to those sort of shows, I'm going to come and see you. So it's like, what happens at your shows, talk about that. You know, be, get, you know, define your market, you know, and really understand who's coming to your shows, what their interests are and you know then you can start promoting to those sort of people. I just did a media course recently and they talk about it as an avatar. So you might have several avatars but they they're a target audience, you know. So write that down, you know, like figure out who that is, like how old are they? Um, are they boys or girls? What do they like? And you're going to figure this out either by knowing who they are already or asking these questions. You know, so what other bands do your fans like? Um, where do they go? Where do they like to eat? Um, you know, these sort of things is going to make it very easy for then you to go make a Facebook post that promotes to them when you're marketing shows. Because so if you can go like 15 to 23 year old vegan person that loves traveling and blah, 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 you know, and most of your fans are kind of that person, then bang, you know, you've just opened up new markets. So. Think about that, think about who they are, start asking these questions and really getting to know your fans. Yeah, artwork, um, same deal, like stick with the same font in all your posters. I know like you're going to get unique with different posters, but yeah. your, your band Raksha has to always be the same. Yeah, for your own shows, you know, and, and on your t-shirts, on um, every single thing, it's always the same, it always looks the same, it always feels the same. It might change colour, but it, the font is the same, so. Yeah, press photos, yeah, so less is more sometimes and, you know, ha have a purpose for the photos, there's no point. Because not every photo would work with every thing. You know, obviously, like a profile pic, you want it in the centre with lots of space so it crops into a circle. You know, landscape photos are good for cover banners. Portrait photos are good for posters. So just be aware of that and have a plan before you go and spend money the next time on a photo shoot. Uh, merchandise. So do you have any ideas on what sort of merch? And you, this is where you can get creative and unique because I've seen... Some cool ideas, you know, like everyone obviously does the shirts, the records and the maybe stubby holders, but you know, what's a cool idea that Raksha could have? Socks. Socks. Toe socks. Everybody needs socks. Toe socks. Yeah, socks. Yuck. 
Anyway, <laughs> get you know, let's brainstorm now. What what could you do? That's a brilliant uh -huh. one, rapture glitter. You know, and that's where you start to get the color thing, you know, like what colors does amber usually wear? Is it blue and pink or something, you know, like, yeah, what, what cool merch things can we do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got like, you know, your little tobacco tin things and you've got your, pretty much, you can put a logo on anything. Car stickers, that's pretty, pretty normal, like, I mean, there's definitely a lot of money in t-shirts, like, if you do it right, you know, if people want them and there's a reason for them to buy them and you can get them made cheap enough and sell them at a profit. You know, the hoodies, the hoodies always going to be popular, but once again, the hoodies are a bit more expensive to make and if you don't sell them, then you've just got a whole bunch of hoodies. You know, and then you've got to think what is easier to tool with as well. You know, because, you know, usually your merch box is, you know, a piece of luggage, right? And, or two pieces of luggage and it's going to cost, not extra money, but you know, it's going to stop from taking other things maybe. So yeah, be, be conscious of that, like, you know, you know, just fun quirky things that might be cheap, but you know, like pretty much when you figure it out, like there is promotion marketing companies that will put a logo on anything, they'll figure it out for you. So if it works and you get people buying them, you know, it's, yeah. it's just add value at your show. So, you know, you might make put on your own show, make a grand, and then you make three or four hundred bucks off merch, and it's like, bang, you know? Bang. Once again, relate to your avatar yeah. and your target market, what yeah, would exactly. they buy? You know, have a think about it. It's, yeah, it's definitely worth thinking about, but, you know, then, you know, you've got to do the cost or the return on investment thing as well, you know? I think you would like to be making 50% per yeah, thing, because, like, otherwise it's, like, it's not worth yeah, it. Because yeah. you got to think, like, you know, 20% is going to be chewed up with the admin of the getting it done. Yeah. And then, you know, so then it's only 30% profit. And then, you know, there's Rosie, there's the merch person. So then there's only 20 or 15% profit left for you as a band. So, you know, and like, you know, like you go to these concerts and people pay $70, $100 for a t-shirt. Like, it's a thing. Like, you know, so if, you, if it's costing you 13 or 15 to make it, you sell it for 30 And if it's a good t-shirt, it looks cool as well. Yeah. You know, like I remember going to a show by Bus Driver and he's like one of the fastest rappers ever and it was like, it's not cheap but it's free or something, you know, some cool saying, you know. Yeah. Does it, you don't wear that shirt and go Bus Driver but I bought it because it was cool, you know, yeah. and people like cool t-shirts. People are making billion, millions of dollars every day on wow. t-shirt sites. We've done a meeting on branding, who's going to go and get some quotes, you know. If you're going to get quotes, get five quotes because you'd be very surprised at the difference in dollar that people try and charge you. And once again, you know, once, once you find a product locally and it's made, then go, you know, outsource it and you'll get it cheaper as well. So. Or, you know, if you like supporting local people, then keep doing that as well. So there's no, no right or wrong. So then there's the actual getting that message out there. They're, that, they're great ideas, like, like this, this specifically is about not me saying what's right or wrong, it's about getting you to understand that whatever you do, is it consistent with who you are and what your audience likes. Because if you just go through random cool ideas out there, they're cool random ideas, but does it do anything extra to you? That's what I'd be asking the question. Yeah. So as a band, sit down and go like, do you all like the idea? Do you believe that it will create a new market? Because if it won't, it's just going to consume time. But is it something you want to do every six months? Or is, it, is it something that Rapture are known for that? You know, or is it just something you want to try once? You know, I'll, I, this, this lecture is just getting you to think about consistency. And yeah. If it's just a trial thing, then that's cool. And just don't do it again if it doesn't work. But you know, it, could, it could be a planned thing. It's like, let's do a six video live series. One at the beach, one in the desert. You know, so I've had an idea of like doing a stage thing where you freeze a tree, you know, you pour hot water on it so that steam comes off and then you know, have some light coming out from it and then the band starts, you know, like extremely expensive gag, 
but you know, one day I'll do it just for the crack. I won't do it because it's marketing or branding, and it might work, but you know, it's just a gag. You know, it's just so you have it in all of your photos. Yeah. Like, do not have a photo shoot without that thing. If that's the case, if your fans are telling you we love that thing, do not do one more photo shoot without you and that together. Yeah. See, that's cheap, free branding, brand association. You know, like. You know, if you do a random beach thing and a glad rap thing and a van thing, it's too much for your fans to remember. Yeah. But if it's, if it's consistent of like, you know, impromptu on location gigs, then it's like, where's Raksha's next impromptu on location gig gonna be? Oh my God, it's there, you know? That could create a following. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but if it's just like three ideas that your brother came up with and you like them because you like your brother and the band thinks, yeah. Well, I... The energy could be wasted. Explore the idea. And, you know, a set of scales like, you know, it's got to cost money versus what you're going to get in return. So if it's going to cost you five or six hundred bucks and it's only going to get you 20 new fans, is that worth it? You know, how much is a new fan worth to you if you can just do one cool photo and get new followers, you know? Or, you know, I, I agree with Josh, like, and the idea that if it's a lead up to a show, it works. But if, if it doesn't work, throw it out. Yeah, so what, that, that's more like a vlog. So it's yeah. like, what are you guys doing this week? Yeah. So you just, you all got phones, you've all got cameras or whatever, go out, take a bunch of footage, cut it all together, put it on YouTube weekly and say, this is Raksha episode one. Yeah. You know, and then it's a consistent thing because it's like, what is Raksha doing this week? You know, let's check in with that, get subscribers to YouTube and then every now and again, you're like, show coming up. So anyway, there's, there is no right or wrong answers. The, the moral of this lesson is to think outside the box and think bigger than what you can think and create some consistency over time and then change it up and then change it up. But you know, definitely logos are gonna stay the same, colors are gonna stay the same, you know, start thinking about that. And as you're taking your notes and figuring out like your brand and your name, do incorporate that into it, you know, these ideas and what, you know, when somebody says Raksha, they can say some other words, yeah. you know, so when you start asking fans, like, if I was to get you to say two sentences about Raksha, if you can get 70% of the people saying some similar words, you're doing the right thing. But if they can't say anything, you know, then, you know, you need to tighten that consistency of your brand and your image. So yeah, I think takeaways are, you know, after this work on your logo and your artwork and all that stuff, um, make sure there's a reason for having your photos done and what they're doing at the end. Um, and then when you go to gigs on Friday and Saturday, think about costumes. One, for some photo shoots around here, and two, that'll be the same things that you'll wear on stage on Thursday. Because then if we can do some media around Lancelin, you know, rupturing Lancelin, wearing the same clothes you're going to wear on stage, there's going to be that, oh, yeah, that's right. Like, if people didn't go to the show, they're going to say, oh, I saw that post in Lancelin. Then they're at the show. You know, next time I see them, I want to see that, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to see that. So yeah, be thinking about those things, which is cool.